Hello, everyone. I'm John Furrier with The Cube. We're here in Palo Alto, California for exclusive news around generative AI. Of course, we've been covering it like a blanket for many months now, and it's been a surge of activity. We're here with two Cube alumni, the CEO and co-founder of OctoML, uh, Luis says, who's uh, been on The Cube many times before. Going back before the craze started, we were chatting a lot about AI. Welcome, welcome, Luis, to The Cube. And of course, the investors were Madrona Adventures and John True is on the board of directors of OctaML, also an expert in AI as well. Former AWS, now a VC partner. Matt McLean did the original investment, give him props there. We're here to discuss the hot news in generative AI that's being released today. Luis, John, thanks for coming on The Cube. Glad to be here. Okay, let's get into it. Yeah, thank you, Luis, John. we've talked many times about what your role has been in the industry, obviously with OctoML, hot startup. Mm -hmm. Generative AI has been going crazy. You have news that you're announcing today. Uh, first, optimized compute service for AI, which is, sounds like a great product. I want to hear more about it. A platform you guys say that's going to help developers have a fully managed cloud infrastructure to make it easy to write AI apps. Basically, take all the heavy lifting and abstract away all the complexity. Let's get into it. What's the news? This is the hottest area. Generative AI, people want to do more. GPUs are on allocation, you can't get any. There's all these different services yeah. out there. A lot of confusion, a lot of noise, but it's hot. Yeah. What's the news? All right, so we are uh, releasing today the Octo AI compute service. So it's the first self-optimizing uh, compute service for generative AI. Um, you know, it offers freedom because it lets users to go choose their model um, or bring their own custom models. Second offers efficiency because we optimize the models and we choose the right hardware and we make sure that they get the right, you know, performance efficiency uh, trade-offs. And then second, it's very easy to use. So we make it very easy for folks to get started. We offer a collection of uh, super optimized uh, models like stable diffusion, you know, Llama-based LLMs, Whisper4, audio transcription, and so on. So with freedom, efficiency, and ease of use, we're offering this uh, service that makes you know, very easy for folks to build uh, really amazing generative AI applications. There's a lot of confusion out there around how to get the, into the Gen AI business. Some people are leaning into it, have been doing well with it, but the rapid pace from idea to code to product, I've never seen this kind of acceleration. What problem are you solving for the developers? I'm obviously this interest is high. What problem are you solving specifically? Yeah, so several problems first, you know, uh, abstracting away the complexity and have, helping clear this confusion, right? So we have, uh, you know, the, we offer the ability for um, developers to come to the platform, select a use case, for example, text to image or text to text, and very quickly get started with state-of-the-art models uh, ready to go and ready to be integrated into uh, their environment. Um, and then we also abstract away all of this incredible complexity that, that is involved in putting a model into production. Because once you, you have a model to deploy, the path from there to actually deploying in a way that you know, first has the SLA that you need to make your application usable, and then two, has the right cost and scalability properties, is, is a lot of work today. And we completely abstract it away and make it fully automatic. John, you've been covering this area. We've been on theCUBE talking about this before. Madrone, obviously early stage investor here um, in the company. The world spun right in the front doorstep of Okta ML. What's your assessment? What do you see in this new um, platform? What's, what's the outlook? What should people think about it? What's your perspective? Well, what's really exciting about the world that we're in right now is there's almost sort of an Android moment that Luis and I have, have written about before that, look, we have very exciting models. You might call them the iPhone kinds of models, things like GPT-4 and model from OpenAI and ChatGPT. Anthropic, Cohere, lots of other models like that that are genuinely really powerful, really exciting. Good. There is also a world of open source AI models that are really useful in their own right and together with the closed models. And the open source models are special because they let developers and scientists push the boundaries on functionality, on data types, on cost, and on latency. And you can, you can, assemble these models into what are called ensembles. Some people call them cocktails of lots of models that work together. And while that is good, and we've seen great companies 
like Runway ML and Mid Journey and, and some others built on top of open source AI, it's been really difficult to get started with that until now and to manage it and to run it all. And so what's exciting about what Octo and Luis and the team are doing is that they're going to be able to give, for the first time, the kind of ease of use uh, with open source AI that you're getting with the closed models. And that's going to unlock lots of new innovation. Let's get into the open source yeah. uh, con content here, Luis, because, you know, John, we were talking mm -hmm. before um, this interview on text and also in person about the long tail. There's a lot of long tail stuff coming out. You got the power law. I've never seen power law applied to this kind of phenomenon before, but open source is making a real impact. More people are coming in, a lot of experimentation, people are looking at different scopes of the size of the models. They don't need to be huge, big models. They can work with existing. There's a, a blending cocktails, if you will. Why is this important? What's the big thing that's going on, Luis? Why is this so successful? Well, I mean, the, the pace of progress in, in these uh, open source models is just absurd and they're showing to have value, right? So I'm talking about literally on a weekly basis, there is new uh, new models that um, are released uh, and these models actually, they're useful for problems that businesses have today, right? So um, now the, the big problem here and then the anxiety this generates is that how do you ride all of that? How do you actually you know, um, how, how do you harvest value out of these models and add to your business in a way that's sustainable? It's exactly your goal. I mean, at OctoML, we're extremely focused in making these uh, open source models that are moving so fast work for you to work for the business, right? So in let you know, the application creators focus on what experience they want to offer their users and abstract away all the complexity of the infrastructure and details involved in getting these models to uh, actually function uh, in production. Right, so that's our laser focus here is let, let businesses extract value from these models that are moving really fast. John mentioned uh, proprietary Android iPhone. I like the analogy, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. OpenAI is, runs on, uh, doesn't run on AWS yet. Anthropic does. Mm -hmm. um, OpenAI is on, on Azure and you got Cohere out there. They interplay. So it's, and, and there's mm -hmm. interaction between them. What is this, is this part of the, the equation because I see lock in there. I don't see a lot of choice if it's something that runs only on AWS or something only runs on another cloud. What does that mean? Because there's consequences of that. I mean, if OpenAI is not going to go and run on any cloud, what good is it? Or is that going to be proprietary? Are we back to the old network protocol stacks where you, know, you had to pick something and stay with it. It's just, it, how do you guys talk about this and how do you see it unfolding? Because it doesn't make any sense to me. I think there's a very early moment that we're in where a lot of these questions are open. You can use OpenAI from AWS. It's just a little harder, things like that. And, and that's that's the moment that we're in. But the clear, the clear movement from enterprises and from developers that, that I speak to is they want to access this powerful technology and they want choice of the best model and the most useful model and combination of those models for a use case that they're building. Luis, what's your take? Yeah, and if I'm in the cube that developers and open source are, are the de facto standards bodies these days. They're the ones driving the change. If you look at just what's happened in the past four months alone in open source, it's been pretty incredible. What, 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 explain the phenomenon there. Yeah, so um, let me let me answer a mix of the two questions that are in the air here, right? So I'll I'll start with um, first. I mean, it's undeniable that these closed proprietary models offered by, say, OpenAI have incredible functionality, right? So uh, and you know it takes a lot of money and a lot of effort to actually build those models and understand, you know, and rightfully they're building a business a business out of it. And these models, say G models like GPT four, they do truly surprising things that are very very powerful. But what, what John said is really important, which is like, you know, it's important for users to ask the question, what is it they want to solve? Like, do they want to solve a question answering uh, service over a set of documents? Do they want to do a tax summarization service? Do they want to do tax classification? Do they want tax to image? And once you understand your use case, it became really clear that, you know, there's a, a large set of open source models that are quickly progressing uh, that can solve those specific use cases and address them, you know, um, uh, very, um, very directly. 
Now, um, and the the end user advantage here is the following, right? So you can, for the use case that you know that can be fulfilled by an open source model or by a customized version or fine-tuned uh, version of those models, you can control the deployment of that model. You have you have control of where it runs and how it runs, what data it's going to touch. You have full transparency on what it does, and you can assign, you can use that in components of your uh, application that uh, that makes sense. That said, it's also important to realize that once you need a functionality that today is only available uh, in the, the large proprietary models, you can still call them. The reality today that John alluded to is that people are building with model, uh, building with an ensemble of models, where you combine a collection of say open source models that do things that you know how they that they do well. You can validate that, but then once you need this functionality only offered by the closed models, you can call them, right? So um, all that said, I think like if you zoom out uh, on on the market and the timeline too, it's interesting to see that the gap between uh, this is a point that John and I made uh, before uh, and supported by others in the community that the gap in functionality between, you know, closed proprietary models and open source models in terms of functionality is shrinking, right? So, and then if you project this out over time, I think it's easy to see a world where, yes, you can probably fulfill all of your, uh, you'll probably be able to fulfill all of your AI needs out of open source models. And that means that the, the big challenge then is like, do you have a platform to run them on, right? So. Yeah, and I think this is where I like the news. Let's get back to the news. So GPUs are on allocation. They're hard to get. They're jacking up the prices. Yeah. NVIDIA's stock is soaring. Um, although they <laughs> just invested in Cohere recently last week. We saw that news. Yeah. Uh, NVIDIA's a player. Okay, Amazon has a cloud and they have a great footprint. Um, carbon neutral, they say, by 2025. And you know these yeah. large language models aren't helping the, uh, the, uh, the world. I mean, talk about carbon footprint impact. You know, I was talking to a customer, they said the sustainable budget, their budget on their metrics are exploding off the charts because the sustainable goals are being not met because they've been blown out by the, all the compute and that. So it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. At the end of the day, the developers just want to code. What do you guys offer the developer? What's the pitch of this platform? Why use you guys? What does this mean for me? I want to get in, get my models nailed down. I want to understand how it all fits. I'm tinkering, I'm kicking the tires. Yeah. How does it work? What? Yeah, absolutely. So, and, and this topic's obviously near and dear to my uh, to my heart because of Octo, the Octo AI computer service, but also because I'm, you know, I'm I'm a computer architect by training, right? So I like seeing, you know, chips being so important in this new phase of the world here. So, um, you know, what we offer to the uh, to the developer again is the ability to not have to worry about the infrastructure. What does this really mean? It means that really making the deployment viable, which in the first instance is you have access to the silicon. Right, so because of our ability to deeply optimize uh, the model and how it runs on the actual hardware, we can actually offer a choice. You may not need an A100, and you might actually uh, use an A10G, for example, or maybe even a T4 that's uh, you know readily available. So, giving offering the optimizations as such that you use less compute, coupled with the ability to you know move the move the actual work around it and abstract that away from the end user point of view gives you access to more silicon fundamentally right so um and then that directly leads to more cost efficiencies right so cost efficiency will come from literally making the code faster and run better that's one and then the multiplicative factor there is the ability to run this on silicon that has better pricing right so and more availability um, and then all that said, of course, we're supporting and working and working with with Amazon in supporting uh, Inferentia, and then we're gonna um, you know we're gonna expand that offering to to other providers as well. Right? So abstracting away the choice of hardware such that users can focus on building their application, which is what really matters, is uh, is a significant part of our mission. And the use cases, you guys, what do you see coming out of the gate? Customization is that the the the, the purpose? Finding their different. Users? Yeah, I mean one. One clear use case that we see extreme uh, need for, and we um, and then it's uh, very much featured in our in our launch is uh, text to image. You know, it's just interesting how in fact text to image is a great example of an open source model like Stable Diffusion. Deep Frogging was around there that was closed before, and then showing that uh, it can offer amazing results. So uh, text to image is you know a very significant workload in the world right now. We support that. Users can come build on with Stable Diffusion 2.1. We also guarantee you have the latest and greatest optimizations, the ability to fine tune that model, uh, and the ability to change the model weights, you know, and replace them such that it can customize for a broad set of users and quickly switch between them. So that's one clear use case is text to image. 
Uh, another use case that we are supporting uh, today, uh, ready to go from pre-optimized models is large language models for say text to text, right? To do summarization, to do uh, text expansion, text classification and so on. Um, the third one is audio transcription, turning you know, audio into text. You know, we support that as well. But we also support, um, you know, customers bringing uh, their own models and, and building their own custom containers, right? So go and run it on the service. So we have an authoring uh, authoring service for that. Um, anyways, yeah, so uh, you can, that's, those Those are some of the key use cases. I also want to point out that we've been releasing steadily some uh, exciting demos built on our compute service. One of them is the Inky MM multi-model. It's the first uh, open source commercializable multimodal model that you can upload. Uh, you can offer images and ask questions about it. It's called Inky MM, you know, and we show how that was built. There's another demo, it's cool. You can make your photos look like it's been cartoonized and then we show what the code looks like there. So these are some examples of use cases that we see that users are really excited about. And it's just like an example of what people can build with, uh, build with you know, very, very quickly. So. Yeah. Great. John, please compliment that. Yeah, so. John, <laughs> weigh in here because you're watching open source. There's innovation happening. What are you seeing in the landscape that supports this need to get tinkering, get building, get experimenting, get mixing those cocktails? I mean, you're seeing performance enhancements, all kinds of, what are you seeing? Yeah, so you're going to, it's about pushing the envelope on one of a few dimensions. Customization to push the envelope on either new features, new types of data, lower cost, higher performance, or privacy and, you know, sensitivity of data. And when you speak to, when you speak to developers or CEOs or CIOs, what you're going to hear is some combination of, of those items become very, very important. And this is not to diminish the amazing work that OpenAI and Cohere and Anthropic and others are doing, but there are cases where a CEO wants to take her own fate in her own hands and open source makes that possible. That's awesome. And I think too, the support that's going to come out open source, you know, everyone said that we'd never see another red hat. Maybe there could be because mm -hmm. You got to get in there. Once there's momentum, you're going to want support. Enterprise is going to want support. Another big part of that, Luis, isn't that true? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. We have world class customer um, success team here, you know, ready to help. And, you know, several of our early access users already, uh, you know, enjoy that benefit. And now we're open into the world. Like, very easy to help folks to get started and have a world class uh, team of ML engineers and, and and solutions engineers to help folks build with it. So, well, congratulations on the on the big news of platform infrastructure managed service. Awesome, get people standing up their models, testing them, customizing them, tuning them up. You are helping them do that. In the last thirty seconds we have left, Luis, give the pitch for the developers watching, for the press that are watching this video. What's the big deal? Why OctoML? Why this platform? Give the give the pitch. Yeah. Uh so releasing the um, Octo AI Compute Service, you know, a place where you can come and build your AI applications with freedom of choosing your model, the model that you want for the application that you, that you want. Uh, highly efficient, make them run fast, a low cost and give you control. Uh, and finally, ease of use. We make it very easy to broaden the set of creators to go build with this, you know, with a set of uh, world-class, models ready optimized to be used and then you know very very clear instructions and and quick start guides here so and that means there'll be more people building with it more innovation and uh, better life here so great service helping the developers getting more innovation getting that flywheel going faster smaller cheaper that's the way we like it uh, in open source Luis and thanks easier. for coming on John <laughs> congratulations on the great investor say hello to Matt for me and uh, and congratulations on the news Luis looking forward to following up Thank you, John. Try it out, everyone. Octo AI Compute Service. Bye. We'll be we'll be checking it out. This is the Cube exclusive news from Octo ML. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. Thanks for watching.